the first time I had fried chicken and waffles, I was very sort of apprehensive. The concept of sweet and savory didn't really work for me so well, but it is really good. I did try it in Boston in a restaurant, and since then, fried chicken and waffles is probably one of my favorite dishes. I do though have to figure out first how to make very good buttermilk fried chicken. After last week's experiment of seeing how the different flowers fry up, I think I have an idea how I can make really nice juicy fried chicken. It will be a little bit different than the recipes you would see for regular buttermilk fried chicken, but it's gluten-free baking and cooking. We always have to make some changes to actually make it work. Here are my chicken thighs, which I soaked in buttermilk for one to three hours with some salt and pepper. And that is what you do with all buttermilk fried chicken recipes, if it's gluten-free or not. What I will do different, I will dip my thigh in a mixture of cornstarch and buttermilk with all the spices. I will put it into Malay flour because that crisped up so nicely. And let's see how beautiful the thighs will turn out. I'm going to begin first with my buttermilk mixture and I'm going to measure about half a cup of cornstarch and whisk in one cup of buttermilk. It will mix up to a very thick batter. And now I'm gonna add the spices. Half a teaspoon of garlic, about a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I'm gonna add about one teaspoon of cayenne, or more or less, depending how much I got left. I'm gonna give the mixture one more good stir and my buttermilk mixture is ready. Moving on, I'm gonna measure one cup of millet and put it in a flattish plate. The last thing I have to prep before I can get started on frying my buttermilk fried chicken is I have to prepare my frying pan. I'm going to add about 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters of oil to my deep frying pan. And the oil has to reach 335 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 degrees Celsius before I can fry my chicken. The oil has reached temperature and I'm ready to get going with my chicken. Here's my chicken thigh and I'm going to dip it into my cornstarch mixture. And I'm going to leave the chicken there for a few seconds to be well coated. I'm going to move now my chicken into the Malay flour bowl. I'm going to turn the chicken in the Malay flour and I'm also going to make sure I'm going to sprinkle some of the flour on it to make sure it's evenly coated. And that's fairly easy because the buttermilk cornstarch batter is helping the Malay flour to stick to it. I'm going to add my chicken to my frying pan. So I'm going to wait for the chicken to get an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. At the current moment we're at 127. I would flip the chicken in between just to make sure they get browned on all sides. It is really nice to see how beautiful they crisp up to crisp up. In one of my batches I did overcrowd the pan a little bit and then what happened was the skin actually breaks or the crust actually breaks. What is Ollie up to? Better keep my that he's not stealing a chicken. I'm going to take the chicken out of the oil and going to shake any excess oil off. I'm going to check each chicken internal temperature before I take it out of the oil. And here's my gluten-free fried chicken fat. That's good. Really good crunch. This turned out really nice. I'm really happy with my experiment. That is what I was looking for. Super excited. So all I need now are my waffles. I'm going to have fried chicken with waffles and maple syrup. So I'm going to get started on making gluten-free waffles. I'm going to measure 180 grams of sorghum. Sorghum is considered one of the most ancient grains. I'm going to add now 70 grams of cornstarch and 60 grams of tapioca starch. And to make my waffles nice and crispy, I'm going to add 70 grams of potato flour. I'm going to add now 90 grams of sugar, 4 teaspoons of baking powder, 2 teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, a pinch of salt, or if you want to be more precise, 1 and a quarter teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, 150 grams of melted butter, and I burned this butter a teeny little bit, 130 milliliters of milk, and I'm going to start blending the ingredients on the lowest setting. I'm going to add now three eggs and I'm going to add one at a time. Here's my waffle batter. Originally when I came up with the waffle recipe, I had my old waffle maker back in the States. So I figured I'm going to buy it right now, just a very cheap one. So I went to Lidl and I had a sale on waffle iron, so I bought one for 17 euros. And it has different adjustable heating settings and but I have no clue how it's going to turn out. I'm going to put in two scoops, hoping it's not too much or too little, and it's on the highest setting. It starts to smell pretty good. So here's my waffle at the highest setting and they look pretty good. I'm going to play a little bit though. Let's move it down to number four. 
Okay, so this seems to be a little bit less well done. So the waffles look pretty uneven and I do think it's because of the waffle iron. Somehow it doesn't spread as evenly. With this like pattern, it's almost like the Eggo waffle. You're making my waffles sad. But Eggo waffles are that because of the thinness. Looks like I will have to shell out 50 or 60 euros to buy the waffle maker I want to get those nice crispy Belgian waffles. I'm still going to eat those with the fried chicken because the flavor profile is just right on for it. And how you eat it is certainly with some good Canadian maple syrup. I'm going to drizzle the syrup all over my waffles and fried chicken. Oh, yes. The flavor combination is just fantastic. You're gonna have the crunch of the fried chicken with the salt and the pepper and then and a little bit of the cayenne and then you're gonna have the crunch of the waffles and then you have the sweetness of the maple syrup. So good. I'm gonna eat that all day long. If you enjoyed watching this video and learning how to make fried chicken and waffles, please subscribe to my channel and check the box for notifications for any upcoming videos. And if you have any questions, please pop them down below into the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.